Hello everyone, this is Big Steve. Di Wong has been busy recently, so I offered to record this video for him. However, due to technical difficulties, I was unable to do so and decided to hire several actors from Fiverr to record it instead. Enjoy! In this video, we will be discussing the doctrine of the fewness of the safe or the teaching that the majority of mankind will go to hell. Many Catholics and Christians nowadays presume their salvation and have an optimistic view that the majority of the people will be saved. This is totally contrary to the teachings of the Church Fathers, doctors of the Church, saints, scholastic theologians and of course sacred scripture. This video is meant to purge modern erroneous beliefs and cause annihilation of our own spiritual lukewarmness and inspire us to work out our salvation in fear and trembling. Philippians 2.12 Now, before we begin our study, I want to make a few things clear. The following four points were brought up by classical theists on Twitter. 1. God desires the salvation of all mankind. In the first epistle to Timothy chapter 2, verses 3 to 4, St. Paul says, This is good, and it is acceptable in the sight of God our Savior. For who desires all men to be saved and to come to the knowledge of the truth? 2. God gives sufficient grace for all men to be saved. 3. God does not demand the impossible. All men who cooperate with God's grace can be saved. 4. No one goes to hell by accident. That being said, it is the perennial teaching of the Catholic saints that the majority of mankind will go to hell due to their own faults. If a man dies with one unrepentant mortal sin, he will go to hell and suffer torments for all eternity. But if a man dies in sanctifying grace, which comes from baptism, and is restored in confession, he will go to heaven and be with God for all eternity. If we honestly consider how many people skip church on Sundays, contracept, masturbate, blaspheme God, etc., it makes sense how few are saved. Now, before you cite a minority of Greek fathers, who taught universalism or a particular Catholic theologian, notice that the Roman Catholic Church has officially condemned that view and therefore, as a Catholic, you cannot affirm this. The majority of the saints did not teach universalism and they had a consensus on the fewness of the safe. Let the listener be aware. If you suffer from scrupulosity or despair, this video is not for you. Click of this video now. Pray the Divine Mercy Chaplet and meditate on God's goodness and universal salvific will. A final note. The majority of the quotes from this video comes from the Redemptorist priest Father Francis Xavier God's book on the fewness of the safe, the teaching of the saints. Go purchase it from a Catholic bookstore or website if you so desire. Now let's begin with the Doctors of the Catholic Church. Doctor of the Church is a title given by the Catholic Church to saints, recognized as having made a significant contribution to theology or doctrine through their contemplation and study. Saint Alphonsus Maria di Liguori CSSR. Saint Alphonsus was an Italian Catholic bishop, spiritual writer, scholastic philosopher, and theologian. He is the doctor of moral theology and patron saint of confessors. In The History of Heresies and Their Refutation, Chapter 8, Article 3, Refutation 8, The Errors of Cornelius Jansenius, he says, we would rather find proofs to the contrary, as that the elect were but few in comparison with the reprobate. Many are called, but few are chosen. And also, fear not, little flock. In preparation for death, 17th consideration, were God to bear forever with sinners, no one should be damned. But the most common opinion is that the greater part of adults, even among Christians, are lost. Wide is the gate, and broad is the way that leadeth to destruction, and many there are that go in thereat. Notice how he says the majority of mankind is damned, and the common opinion is that the majority of adult Christians are damned, and this is based on scriptural exegesis. Let's move on to St. Robert Bellamine, S.J. 
Bellarmine was an Italian Jesuit and a cardinal of the Catholic Church who was an important figure during the Counter-Reformation. Bellarmine is quoted in John Delamue's Sin and Fear, The Emergence of a Western Guilt Culture, which says, Thus, the number of the reprobate will be like the multitude of olives which fall on the earth when the olive tree is first shaken, whereas the fewness of the elect will be like the fewness of those olives which have escaped the hands of the harvesters and remained among the topmost branches, to be shaken down later one by one. Or, again, the multitude of the reprobate will be like the grape harvest in which many vats are filled with the bunches that are collected by many harvesters, while the fewness of the elect will resemble the fewness of the bunches, which, by oversight, are left behind on the vines after the end of the harvest. Clearly, this is indicative that the overwhelming majority of mankind will be damned. Let's move on to the angelic doctor, St. Thomas Aquinas O.P. St. Thomas Aquinas was a Dominican priest who's arguably the best theologian of the Catholic Church, after Our Lady, the Most Blessed Virgin Mary. In Summa Theologiae, Book 1, Question 23, Answer 7, Reply to Objection 3, he says, Since their eternal happiness, consisting in the vision of God, exceeds the common state of nature, and especially insofar as this is deprived of grace through the corruption of original sin, those who are saved are in the minority. In this especially, however, appears the mercy of God, that He has chosen some for that salvation, from which very many in accordance with the common course and tendency of nature fall short. Next is St. Albert the Great, O.P. He was a German Dominican friar, philosopher, scientist, and bishop, and considered one of the greatest scholastics. In On the Fewness of the Saved, the Teaching of the Saints, he is quoted saying, In Luke 13, 23, And a certain man said to him, Lord, are they few that are saved? And he said to them, for one had inquired on behalf of them all, strive to enter by the narrow gate. For many, I say to you, shall seek to enter, and shall not be able. And in verse 25, Christ gives the first reason why few are saved. Many are called, but few are chosen, i.e. many profess the faith in words, but deny it by their deeds. Ecclesiastes 1.15 the number of fools is infinite. Saint Bonaventure OFM Saint Bonaventure was an Italian Franciscan bishop, cardinal, and one of the greatest scholastics. In Breviloquium, he says, When, therefore, he condemns and reproves, he acts according to justice. When he pre-elects, he acts according to grace and love, which do not preclude justice. All men, belonging as they did to the throng of perdition, were headed for condemnation. Therefore, more souls are reproved than are elected, in order to show that salvation is by special grace, while condemnation is by ordinary justice. No one, then, has the right to complain about God's will, for it does all things with utter righteousness. We should, instead, give thanks in all circumstances and exalt the ways of divine providence. St. Peter Canisius, S.J. He was a Dutch Jesuit priest who became known for his strong support for the Catholic faith during the Protestant Reformation. In Notes on the Gospel for Septuagesima Sunday, he says, As though bewailing the fewness of the elect, Christ says, How narrow is the gate, and straight is the way that leadeth to life, and few are that find it. St. Anthony of Padua, OFM. He was a Franciscan priest who was known for his powerful preaching, expert knowledge of scripture, and undying love and devotion to the poor and the sick. In his sermon on the Lord's Supper, he says, Finally, the dinner banquet is represented, which is held for the blessed whom the Lord admits, after a good death, to the refreshment of eternal life, which is referred to in the words of Luke 14, a certain man made a great supper and invited many, etc. This supper is held in private, for only the small number of his intimate friends are admitted, while those who had been present at the breakfast are excluded. Breakfast equals many who are called. Hence, many are called, i.e. to the breakfast of faith, but few are chosen for the banquet of eternal life. St. Anthony shows that while many are called to faith, from this group only a select few are called to heaven, showing the fewness of the saved is even applied to believers. St. Bernard of Clairvaux, 
Osist. He was an abbot, mystic, co-founder of the Knights Templar, and a major leader in the reformation of the Benedictine order. In Vigil of Christmas, Sermon 3, he says, For the Lord is coming. He is about to judge the living and the dead, and to each one according to his works. Not everyone has this knowledge, my brothers, but neither is it common to many. There are truly few who are saved. Saint Bede, the Venerable. He was an English monk and an author and scholar. He was one of the greatest teachers and writers during the early Middle Ages. In Commentary on Luke, Book 5, Chapter 18, he says, So great will be the rarity of the elect that the ruin of the world is spurred on apace. Saint Anselm of Canterbury. He was an Italian Benedictine monk, abbot, philosopher, and theologian of the Catholic Church. In Operum Pars Tertia, he says, For we are all certain, as truth himself has said it, that of the many who are called, few are chosen. But how few they are, none of us knows, for the truth has remained silent. For this reason, let anyone who does not yet live as the few live, either join the few by correcting how he lives, or else fear certain reprobation. Saint Isidore of Seville. He was a Hispano-Roman scholar, theologian, and Archbishop of Seville. In Book of Questions on Numbers, question 42, he says, Moreover, that 600,000 armed men went out from Egypt, and from them only two entered the Promised Land. This figure represents the many who passed through baptism to faith, but very few reach the heavenly homeland. This is the same figure mentioned in the Gospel, where many are called, but few are chosen. Matthew 22.14 As for the fact that only two enter, it may refer to those who belong to the heavenly kingdom and attain it, or it may signify those predestined for eternal blessedness. Here, we see that many people are baptized in the faith, but few of them actually reach heaven, showing St. Isidore believes the fewness of the saved even applies to Catholics. Pope St. Gregory the Great He was a great pope and theologian, who's known for instituting the first recorded large-scale mission from Rome, the Gregorian Mission, to convert the then largely pagan Anglo-Saxons to Christianity. In Homily on the Gospels, Book 1, Homily 19, he says, But after this, what follows is indeed very terrifying. For many are called, but few are chosen. Because many come to faith, and yet few are led to the heavenly kingdom. Behold, today we have gathered in the church, and its walls are filled. But who knows how few are numbered among the chosen flock of God? Pope St. Gregory's exegesis of scripture is that many people become Catholic, but few are led to heaven. Pope St. Leo the Great He was a great pope known for his tome, a document which was a major foundation to the debates of the Council of Chalcedon. In Sermon 49, Chapter 2, he says, Therefore, the sentiment of truth is fulfilled in every way, which we learn to be that the path is narrow and the way leading to life is arduous as stated in Matthew 7.14. And while the breadth of the path to death attracts many with its frequent processions on the paths of salvation, few are those who enter, and rare are their footsteps. But why is the left path more populous than the right? Is it not because the multitude is inclined towards worldly pleasures and material goods? Even though what is desired is perishable and uncertain, labor is more readily undertaken for the desire of pleasure than for the love of virtue. Thus, though there are countless individuals who desire visible things, few can be found who prioritize the eternal over the temporal. According to Pope St. Leo, there are few who aim towards heaven, while the path to hell is common. St. Peter Chrysologus He is known as the Doctor of Homilies for the concise yet theologically rich reflections he delivered during his time as the Bishop of Ravenna. In Sermon 97 he says, the great number of the blossoms gives hope of a great harvest of fruit, but so many are cut off by the blasts of the wind that very few persevere to yield their fruit. In the same way, the believers in Christ seem to be many when the church is at peace, but when the storm of persecution blows, few are found in the fruit of martyrdom. He's implying that while there are many believers, there are few who would be willing to sacrifice their lives for Christ, the ultimate calling for Christians.
Saint Cyril of Alexandria. He was known for his defensive Orthodox Christology against the Nestorians. In commentary on Isaiah Book 2, he says, As the earth has become accursed on account of the great iniquity found in it, hence unexpectedly made destitute, they will scarcely escape in safety, for those that are left will be few and easily counted. This concerns the literal meaning and the outward aspect of what is recounted. But for the inward meaning, I say once again that few shall be left, i.e., few who have pleased God in justice and have acquired riches by their noble and valiant conduct. They are few in accordance with the statement of our Saviour, that many are called, but few are chosen. Saint Augustine of Hippo He is considered one of the greatest church fathers, whose writings greatly influenced the Latin West. In Sermon 111 he says, The Lord did not say, not few, but many are saved. He did not say this. But what he did say when he heard, If you are saved, strive to enter through the narrow gate. When, therefore, you hear that few are saved, the Lord confirmed what he heard. For narrow is the gate, and difficult is the way that leads to life, and there are few who find it. In another place, he himself says, The way is narrow and confined that leads to life, and there are few who enter through it. Broad and spacious is the way that leads to destruction, and many are those who go through it. Matthew 7, 13-14 Why do we rejoice in multitudes? Hear me, O few. I know that many hear and few hearken. I see the threshing floor. I seek the grains. And scarcely do the grains seem visible when the air is winnowed. But it will come to pass that it will be winnowed. Therefore, Few are those who are saved in comparison to the many who perish. St. Jerome He was an early Christian priest, confessor, theologian, translator, and historian, known for his translation of the Bible into Latin known as the Vulgate. In commentary on the prophet Isaiah, Book 8, Chapter 24, he says, Among the peoples and nations, so great will be the scarcity of saints about whom the Lord speaks in the gospel. Many are called but few are chosen, Matthew 20, 16. And the pressure on the righteous will be so severe that, if possible, even the elect of God will be tested. Their scarcity will be compared to the very rare berries of olives, which, when shaken and harvested, scarcely remain on the top of the branches. And, just as when the vintage is finished, the poor are accustomed out of necessity to go around the vines and gather a few scattered grapes, so those who remain after the vintage of the world and the pressure will be like a few olives on the topmost branches. St. Jerome's analogy goes to show how few he viewed are saved compared to the damned. St. John Chrysostom He was called the Golden Mouthed because of his captivating preaching and public speaking. In Homily 24 on the Acts of the Apostles, he says, Many more in number are they who go down into hell but greater than it is the kingdom, however few it contain. How many, suppose you, may there be in our city who are likely to be saved? Tus sosemenus. It is disagreeable what I'm going to say, but I will say it nevertheless. Among all these myriads, there were easily a hundred thousand and more at Antioch, notes Cornelius Lapidae, there are not to be found one hundred likely to be saved. Nay, even as to these, I question it. For think what wickedness there is in the young, what supineness in the aged. So, according to St. John Chrysostom, not even 100 out of 100,000 will be saved. Again, in Against the Opponents of the Monastic Life, Book 1, 8, he says, Again, he says, there are many who are called and few who are chosen. So when Christ asserts that the greater part perishes, but salvation is firmly predetermined for the few, why vehemently argue against me? You do the same, as if regarding Noah and the flood, you speak words to us, wondering if all perished. But only two or three men escaped the punishment. Do you think you can obstruct our mouths with this reasoning, so that we would not dare to condemn the multitude? Chrysostom clearly says the fewness of the saved is derived from the teaching of Scripture. Again, Gotts quotes him, saying, how small a number are reduced those who attain salvation, 
so that the greater part of the body of the church is like to a body that is dead and motionless. So, here we see he applies the fewness of the saved even to those in the church, saying more in the church are damned than saved. St. Ambrose of Milan, he was a bishop of Milan who was a renowned theologian who wrote against Arianism and paganism. In explanation of Psalm 40 verse 2, he says, The day seems bitter which condemns many to punishment. For the way of virtue is narrow, that of vice broad. Hence, they who walk in virtue are fewer, and they who dwell in shame are more numerous. Hence, it is the number of them who are to receive reward for their merits is lower than that of those whose grave sins will earn them an adverse sentence in judgment. St. Gregory Nazianzen He was an archbishop and Cappadocian father who's known for his Trinitarian theology. He says, Hence we are taught that those who obtain salvation are few, but do not be disconcerted by the great number of those who are deemed to be pious in name. For the name of Christ is invoked among many, but in few is it corroborated by the evidence of good works. St. Gregory Nazianzen teaches the fewness of the saved, and then immediately says few Christians live up to their calling. St. Ephraim, the Syrian. He was a Syriac father, known for his theological poetry and hymns. He says, The Lord of glory said, Enter by the narrow gate. What is the meaning of this narrow gate and straight way that leads to eternal life, and of the few there are that find it? And who is it that finds it and makes known this way to us? It is all the saints. St. Ephraim thinks the few who find the narrow gate applies to the saved, clearly showing he views the fewness of the saved as biblical. St. Irenaeus of Lyon. He was known for combating heterodox or Gnostic interpretations of scripture as heresy and defining proto-orthodoxy. God showed himself not well pleased in many instances towards those who sinned, so, also, in the latter, many are called, but few are chosen. Matthew 20, 16, As then the unrighteous, the idolaters, and fornicators perished, so also is it now. For both the Lord declares that such persons are sent into eternal fire. Here, we see St. Irenaeus applying the many are called, but few are chosen verse to heaven and hell, showing the fewness of the saved is biblical. St. Basil the Great. He was a bishop of Caesarea who supported the Nicene Creed and fought against Arianism. In On the Renouncement of the World, he says, Imitate those who live rightly and inscribe their actions on your heart. Choose to be of the number of the few. For what is good is rare, which is why there are few that enter into the kingdom of heaven. Take care not to think that all are saved who dwell in a cell, be they good or bad. For this is not so. Many, indeed, adopt a holy and devout mode of life, but few suffer its yoke. For the kingdom of heaven suffereth violence, and men of violence bear it away. These words are from the gospel. St. Basil teaches the fewness of the saved, then even goes as far as not to presume the salvation of those Christians who decided to become hermits and monks. St. Hilary of Poitiers. He was a bishop referred to as the Hammer of the Arians and the Athanasius of the West. In commentary on Matthew chapter 12, he says, This man, therefore, is taken away and cast into outer darkness, for many are called, but few are chosen. So, it is not the invited who are in short supply, but the elect who are rare. For in the inviter is found the kindness of popular goodness without exception. But, among the invited, by a just judgment, election is made of uprightness. St. Francis de Sales St. Francis de Sales was the Bishop of Geneva and was known for his spiritual direction and spiritual formation, as well as his apologetics against Protestantism. In the Catholic Controversy, Part 1, Chapter 8, he says, Many are called and few are chosen. That is, many are in the militant church who will never be in the triumphant. How many are within who shall be without? St. Francis de Sales clearly says that many in the church will go to hell. How much more does this apply to those outside the church? St. John of the Cross, OCD. He was a Spanish Catholic priest, mystic, who was known for his mystical literature regarding the spiritual life. 
In the spiritual canticle, he says, 1. The soul at the beginning of this song has grown aware of her obligations and observed that life is short. The path leading to eternal life is constricted, the just one scarcely saved, the things of the world vain and deceitful, that all comes to an end and fails like falling water, and that the time is uncertain, the accounting strict, perdition very easy, and salvation very difficult. Saint Teresa of Avila, OCD. She was a Carmelite nun and prominent Spanish mystic and religious reformer. In the autobiography chapter 32, she says, This vision too was the cause of the very deep distress which I experience, because of the great number of souls who are bringing damnation upon themselves, especially of those Lutherans, for they were made members of the church through baptism. I do not know how we can look on so calmly and see the devil carrying off as many souls as he does daily. Saint Teresa attests to the many souls who go to hell, especially the Lutherans who are Christians. How much more will this apply to non-Christians than who do not have explicit faith in Christ? Now on to the saints and blesseds. Blessed Gennaro, Maria Sarnelli CSSR. He was a redemptorist priest who preached missions and aided his friend St. Alphonsus Maria de Liguori in his work. He also tended to the sick and helped to get women out of the life of prostitution. In Il Mondo Santificato, Consideration 59, he says, Consider how, in the abyss of eternal torments, innumerable Christians go there to burn. This is the more common opinion of the Greek and Latin doctors, the oracles of the church, and interpreters of the sacred mysteries. It is founded on divine scriptures and reason. It is believed that the majority of the faithful who die with the use of reason are condemned. Every mortal sin alone is enough to send the soul to hell. Considering how many sins are committed in all states and classes, in every age, in every time, in all places. Here, we see this blessed affirm that the common opinion of the teachers of the faith is that the majority of Catholics who have the use of reason go to hell. In the same work, he says, Consider how many souls go to hell every day due to poorly administered sacraments, especially because of bad confessions. So, even countless souls who receive the sacraments are being damned. Once more in that work, he says, Now, if the majority of Christians sin gravely and confess poorly, the door to innocence is closed for them because they have sinned. The door to penance is closed too because they confess poorly. Only the door to hell remains open for them to burn eternally. Oh, poor souls running towards the path of perdition like lambs to the slaughter, and you are not aware of your impending ruin. Saint Claude La Colombière S.J. Saint Claude was a missionary and aesthetical writer known for being the confessor of Saint Margaret Mary Alacoque, the mystic who helped spread the Sacred Heart devotion. He says, The small number of the elect should not be the subject of our fear. It is sins that prevent us from being among them. There are few predestined among Christians, because predestination is necessarily followed by salvation. But it is not any less necessarily followed by works that ensure salvation. You are frightened when told that out of a hundred thousand, barely one will be saved. What does it matter to you, as long as it is you? For my part, to the contrary, the more I consider the matter, the more I am astonished that of a hundred thousand, there are as many as three who are saved. Saint Claude says, most Christians will be damned, and out of a hundred thousand, barely one will be saved. Saint Vincent de Paul CM, he was a French priest, known for serving the poor. In Sermon on Perseverance, he says, what is rare, and rare than can be said, is to persevere. And this is why there are so few predestinate, so few who are saved. It is because, as the Son of God assures us, only he who perseveres will be saved. Saint Louis de Montfort. He was a French priest known for his preaching and his influence on Mariology. In Letter to Friends of the Cross, he says, If anyone, says our Lord, to point out the small number of chosen ones willing to conform themselves to Christ crucified by carrying their cross. Their number is so small that we would be dumbfounded if we knew it. It is so small 
that there is scarcely one in ten thousand, as has been revealed to several saints, including St. Simon Stylites, as is related by Abbot Nilus, St. Basil, St. Ephraim, and others. It is so small that should it please God to gather them together, he would have to call them one by one. St. John Vianney, he was a parish priest known for his saintly life, mortification, persevering ministry in the sacrament of confession, and ardent devotion to the Blessed Virgin Mary. In Life of St. John Baptist Vianney, Cure of Ars, he says, The elect are like the ears of corn which escape from the reaper's hand, and like the bunches of grapes left after the vintage. The damned are like the sheaves piled up in the granary, or the grapes pressed down into the wine vats. They fall into hell fast as the snowflakes on a winter's day. On page 85 of the same book, St. John Vianney says, O oh, my children, how sad it is. Three-fourths of the Christian world labor only for the gratification of this miserable carcass, which will soon rot in the earth, while they think not of their poor soul, which is to be happy or miserable forever. St. John Judas, C.I.M. He was a priest who was an ardent proponent of the Sacred Heart of Jesus and dedicated himself to its promotion and celebration. In The Admirable Heart of Mary, he says, The thorns represent the wicked, whose lives are infested with the thorns of their sins. This torrent is the world, which resembles an impetuous torrent, full of refuse and evil odors, making much noise but flowing swiftly past, dragging the majority of men into the abyss of perdition. The world passeth away, and the concupiscence thereof. St. Benedict Joseph Labor He was a beggar who lived as a pilgrim after attempting monastic life. In the life of the venerable servant of God, Benedict Joseph Labor Writing to his parents after leaving La Chartreuse, he made use of the following, amongst other expressions. Meditate on the terrible pains of hell, which are endured throughout an eternity, for one single mortal sin which is so easily committed. Endeavor to be of the small number of the elect. This, he repeats in the second and last letter written to them after he left the convent of Septfontaines. Think of the everlasting fire of hell, and of the small number of the elect, St. Thomas of Villanova, OSA. He was a noted preacher, aesthetic, and religious writer of his day. In Sermon 1 for the 29th Sunday after Pentecost, he says, Once the disciples proposed this question to the Redeemer, Lord, are there few who are saved? What he answered them, let us pay attention. Strive, he says, to enter through the narrow gate, for the way that leads to life is narrow, and few enter through it. Behold the response, few are saved. Could anyone think that few faithful are saved in comparison with the unbelievers? And then, indeed, few are saved. But pay attention to what he now brings forth about the called, about the faithful. Many are called, but few are chosen. Even not only in terms of faith, but from any vocation, Alas, alas, out of many called few are chosen. Out of many called to the priesthood, to religious life, few are chosen. What then should we hope for? It is not said to make us despair, but to be more vigilant. St. Thomas of Villanova sees the fewness of the saved also applying to Catholics and those with a vocation, pulling his opinion from his exegesis of scripture. Venerable Luis de la Puente, S.J., he was a Spanish Jesuit theologian and aesthetic writer. In Meditations on the Mysteries of Our Holy Faith, Meditation 44, he says, And hence it is, that although these predestinate be but few in comparison of those who perish by their own default. St. Antonius of Florence, O.P., he was an Italian Dominican friar who served as Archbishop of Florence. In Summa Theologiae 1, he says, Nor is this statement contradicted by the words of John in Apocalypse 7, I saw a great crowd, etc. For the elect, although their number is so great in itself as for it to be practically impossible for us to count them, yet by comparison with the reprobate, they are few, just as the grains of sand in a sack are practically countless, yet very little compared with all the sand of the sea. In the same way, the elect are few, when measured against the perverse. 
Here, St. Antonius compares the reprobate to the sand of the sea, showing that countless are damned. St. Lawrence Justinian. He was noted for his Christian charity and his unbounded liberality. All the money he could raise he bestowed upon the poor, while he himself led a life of simplicity and poverty. In On the Compunction and Lamentation of Christian Perfection, he says, They are few in number who devote themselves to inward meditation, for it is opposed to the works of the flesh and to the rebellion of the senses. Narrow, indeed, is the way of the Spirit, which leads to perfection and to the possession of Christ. But broad is the way that indulges the pleasure of the flesh, and countless are they who travel by it. Saint Bernardino of Siena, OFM. He was an Italian Franciscan priest and missionary preacher in Italy. He was a systemizer of scholastic economics. In Speculum Peccatorum de Contemptu Mundi, he says, the reason why many enter into eternal damnation by the wide gate and the broad way is the one given in Ecclesiastes 1. The perverse are hard to be corrected, and the number of fools is infinite. Alas, they think more of the present life than of the end that is to follow it, from which a simple conclusion may be deduced. There are many in the wayfaring state in this world, but few of them will be of the number of the saved. St. Vincent Ferrier O.P. He was a Valencian Dominican friar and preacher who gained acclaim as a missionary and a logician. In Sermon 1 for Septuagesima Sunday, he says, Thus, in absolute terms, there are many elect, as John says. But if we adopt the relative standpoint, comparing the elect with the number of the damned, then they are few. In the same way, as in a handful of sand there are many grains in absolute terms, but few in comparison with those on the seashore, so the human race, on account of its great number, is compared with sand, as may be seen in the promise made to Abraham when the Lord said to him, I will multiply thy seed as the stars of heaven, and as the sand that is by the seashore. Genesis 22. Here, God speaks of the handful, for the souls of the just are in the hand of God, and in absolute terms are countless, as St. John says. But in comparison with the damned, they are nothing at all. St. Vincent Ferrier says the saved compared to the damned is as if there is nothing at all, showing just how few are saved. St. Leonard of Port Morris OFM. He was an Italian Franciscan preacher and aesthetic writer. In his sermon, The Little Number of Those Who Are Saved, he says, Note well that there is no question here of the human race taken as a whole, nor of all Catholics taken without distinction, but only of Catholic adults, who have free choice and are thus capable of cooperating in the great matter of their salvation. First, let us consult the theologians, recognized as examining things most carefully and as not exaggerating in their teaching. Let us listen to two learned cardinals, Cajetan and Bellamine. They teach that the greater number of Christian adults are damned, and if I had the time to point out the reasons upon which they base themselves, you would be convinced of it yourselves. But I will limit myself here to quoting Suarez. After consulting all the theologians and making a diligent study of the matter, he wrote, The most common sentiment which is held is that among Christians there are more damned souls than predestined souls. Add the authority of the Greek and Latin fathers to that of the theologians, and you'll find that almost all of them say the same thing. This is the sentiment of St. Theodore, St. Basil, St. Ephraim, and St. John Chrysostom. You will hear St. Gregory saying clearly, Many attain to faith, but few to the heavenly kingdom. St. Anselm declares, There are few who are saved. St. Augustine states even more clearly, Therefore, few are saved in comparison to those who are damned. The most terrifying, however, is St. Jerome. At the end of his life, in the presence of his disciples, he spoke these dreadful words. Out of 100,000 people whose lives have always been bad, you will find barely one who is worthy of indulgence. But why seek out the opinions of the fathers and theologians when Holy Scripture settles the question so clearly? Look into the Old and New Testaments and you will find a multitude of figures, symbols and words that clearly point out this truth. Very few are saved. Clearly, St. Leonard teaches that most people are damned, including adult Christians. 
and he arrives at this conclusion from scripture and tradition. Saint Bruno di Segni OSB. He was an Italian Roman Catholic prelate and professed member from the Order of Saint Benedict, who served as Bishop of Segni and Abbot of Monte Cassino. In Sentences, Book 1, Chapter 2, he says, This ark represents Holy Church, outside of which no one is saved, and those who are found within which in the day of vengeance shall not perish. For many now seem to be within her, who will then be found outside her. The wicked are much more numerous than those who seek heavenly things. The way that leads to life is narrow, but the way that leads to damnation is broad. Saint Bruno says many in the church will be damned. Saint John Cassian, he was a Christian monk and theologian, celebrated in both the Western and Eastern churches for his mystical writings. In Institutes of the Cenobia, Book 4, Chapter 38, he says, the gate is narrow, and the way is difficult that leads to life, and few are those who find it. Matthew 7. Consider yourself among the few and chosen, and do not grow cold by the example and lukewarmness of the multitude. Live as one of the few, so that you may merit to be found in the kingdom of God with the few. For many are called, but few are chosen. Matthew 20 and 22. And the flock is small to whom it pleased the Father to give the inheritance. Luke 12, St. Nihilus the Elder. He was one of the many disciples and stalwart defenders of St. John Chrysostom. In Epistolarum Liber Primus, Epistle 159, he says, Narrow is the gate and straight is the way that leadeth to life, and few there are that locate it. If then they that find it are few, fewer still will they be who are able to go in by it, for some do not go in on account of their own negligence. St. Peter Julian Amard, SSS He was a French Catholic priest and founder of two religious institutes, the Congregation of the Blessed Sacrament for Men and the Servants of the Blessed Sacrament for Women. In Amard, Pierre Julian, the Divine Eucharist extracts from the writings and sermons of Pierre Julian Amard, he says, There are few who are chosen, said our Lord. Of the two paths that lead, the one to life and the other to death, the first is little followed, and the second is dense with travellers. According to these words, the majority of men are damned. Even if the gospel did not give this to be understood, what we see before us would already give an abundant grounds for fearing that it was so. St. Pascasius Radbertus he was a Carolingian theologian and the abbot of Corby. In commentary on Matthew book 4 chapter 7, he says, Thus, push away everything narrow from the soul on both sides, because the wide gate and spacious road lead to hell. However, how narrow is the gate and the road that leads to life? Hence, the bridegroom says in the Song of Solomon, Who is this that ascends like a column of smoke, perfumed with myrrh and frankincense? And if it is said, Who is this who ascends the path that few find? Then Abbot Werner of St. Blaise, OSB. In Dominica Tertia in Septuagesima, he says, This pertains not to the earlier saints, but to the Gentiles. For many come to faith. Many are within the church, but few reach the kingdom. That many are condemned, both of the first and of the last, is added in the terrible verdict. For many are called to faith, but few are chosen for the kingdom. Then Abbot Werner says that many who are called to the church will go to hell, and few Catholics will reach heaven. Venerable Louis of Granada, OP, he was a Dominican theologian, writer, and preacher. He says, Contemplate that region where Christianity is most widely professed and see in what state Christianity is to be found in our most deplorable century. And you will admit that in this mystical body, scarcely any sound member is to be found. Let's turn our attention to some early Christians and medievals teaching the fewness of the saved. Theophylact of Orit. He was a Byzantine Archbishop of Orit and commentator on the Bible. He says... Many, deceiving themselves with vain hope, think they will attain the heavens, and feeling themselves part of the feasting choir, have great thoughts about themselves. Many, however, are called, for God calls many, indeed all, but few are chosen, for there are few who are saved, 
and who are worthy to be chosen by God. Retherius of Verona, he was a teacher, writer, and bishop. He says, If these truths did not apply at all to those who profess to be believers and are baptized, where would be the sense in the Lord's statement, For many are called, but few are chosen? Matthew 20.16 And not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of heaven but the one who does the will of my Father who is in heaven. Matthew 7.21 For who are the chosen ones, if not those who, having entered the church through baptism, are few, elected only if they lived the sacrament that they received with faith? Those who are not chosen are those who did not keep what they promised. Dennis the Carthusian He was a theologian and mystic. In Opera Omnia, he says, this means that infernal punishment gathers into its clutches a great number of every class, rank, and kind of men. Indeed, so many that the others seem few in comparison, and the number is so great as to be called all, as when the apostle says, For all seek the things that are their own. Philippians 2.21 He says, But by explicitly adding that there are few who find this narrow way of salvation, and many who walk in the broad way of damnation. He clearly indicates that few are saved and many are damned, to prevent you from pinning foolish self-deception on the divine mercy, or from becoming like to those who walk in the broad way. Pseudo Aquinas, Nicholas of Gorin O.P. He was a preacher and scriptural commentator. He says, The church, in which few, in comparison with the damned, are saved, for it is stated in Matthew 7, Narrow is the way that leadeth to life, and few there are that find it. And yet, fewer are those who walk along that way, and very few indeed those who persevere in it. Few are saved in the ark, to wit, just eight souls, by which the fewness of the elect is signified. Pope Innocent III Pope Innocent III was one of the most powerful and influential of the medieval popes. He says, Undoubtedly, many are called, but few are chosen, since even of the faithful many are damned, to wit, those who deny their faith by their works. Honorius of Artun Honorius was a very popular 12th century Christian theologian who wrote prolifically on many subjects. He says, All of them lay prostrate in the desert, and only two, along with the multitude of the children of Israel, entered. Those who lay prostrate in the desert are the many called who refuse to come, while the two who entered are the active and contemplative, animated by a twofold love, who will enter the rest of the Lord. Rupert of Dot, OSB. He was an influential Benedictine theologian, exegete, and writer on liturgical and musical topics. He says, Instead, it is because he removes many who seem to be written in it because they confess to knowing God, by judgment of their deeds, since they deny it by their actions. For many are called, but few are chosen. Matthew 22, 14, meaning many in the present church, giving their names in the book of confession, are enrolled. But few, which is greatly to be feared, will escape the judgment of condemnation. Eusebius of Caesarea Eusebius was an early church historian and bishop. He says, Paul lamented, Unhappy man that I am, who shall deliver me from the body of this death? But he is troubled and almost despondent on account of his sense of humanity at the sight of so great a multitude of those that perish, for broad and spacious is the way that leadeth to perdition. Cardinal Geoffrey of Vendôme, OSB. He was a French Benedictine monk, writer, and cardinal. He says, after his resurrection, our Christ, God and Lord, was seen by only a few, and for a short time. Only the good will have the glory of the future resurrection, and they will see without end their Creator and Redeemer, whose bodily presence they had for a short time after the resurrection. And few will be compared to the multitude of the wicked. For as he himself says in the Gospel, many are called, but few are chosen. Matthew 20, 16. His resurrection, both the good and the wicked saw and had our Saviour in the flesh for some time. He came for the salvation of many, indeed for all, 
so that those who believed in him could be saved. Those who refused to believe would have no excuse for their sins and would be condemned. Bishop Jonas of Orléans He was Bishop of Orléans and played a major political role during the reign of Emperor Louis the Pious. He says, For the lovers of the world, the way is broad and spacious and leads to death. But for the lovers of Christ, the way is straight and narrow and leads to life. For, very sad to say, those in the church in our times who are advancing by the broad and spacious way towards death are greater in number than those who strive to enter by the straight and narrow way that leads to life. Theophilasius, Archdeacon of the Holy See, he says, For many come to faith, but few are led on to the number of the elect, as the Lord himself publicly declares, saying, Many are called, but few are chosen. Clearly, he interprets scripture as saying few Catholics will be saved. Salvian. Salvian was a 5th century Christian who lived in Gaul. He says, For apart from a very small number who flees evil, what do we find among the whole body of Christians, if not a cesspit of vices? Now, we move on to the scholastic theologians and exegetes. John Justus of Landsberg Cart. He was a German Carthusian monk and aesthetical writer. He says, the elect are those who shall be placed at the right hand at the last judgment, to hear, Come ye blessed of my Father. And he says that they will be few. Yet all have been invited, as many as have received knowledge of the faith. Hence it is, that of the many who are called, there will remain but few who are chosen. For almost all men love darkness rather than light and love, vanities and worldly things rather than eternal things. Alvarez de Paz, S.J. Alvarez was a Spanish Jesuit mystic of the Society of Jesus, born at Toledo. Occasionally, during his sermons, he fell into ecstasy and had to be carried from the pulpit. He says, If we are all wayfarers, and the way we must travel appears narrow to flesh and blood, and is trodden by very few, for narrow is the way that leadeth to life, and few there are that go in by it, for we must live after the manner of the few, if we are to attain that dignity which is reached only by the select few. Alfonso Salmaron, S.J. He was a Spanish biblical scholar, a Catholic priest, and one of the first Jesuits. He says, Many are called to the heavenly kingdom, but among them few are chosen in comparison with the number of the called, as some indeed come, but some are cast out. Alfonsus de Mendoza, O.S.A. He says, Moreover the greater part, and indeed the very greatest part of men, even of the faithful, in the absence of sickness or injury, entangle themselves without fear or scruple in various kinds of sin, so that there are exceedingly few of whom a fair and detailed examination of conscience would not bring to light at least one or two unforgiven mortal sins. Luis de Molina, S.J. Luis de Molina was a Spanish Jesuit priest, theologian, and jurist follower of second scholasticism of the school of Salamanca. He says, Yet when I consider the multitude of sinners, and how little trouble men take about their salvation, and how casually, if not entirely without preparation, they approach the sacraments, I greatly fear that the majority of the faithful are of the reprobate rather than of the predestinate especially since a single mortal sin is enough for eternal damnation. Gregory of Valencia, S.J. He was a Spanish humanist and scholar who was a professor at the University of Ingolstadt. He says, For many are called, but few are chosen. God reproves this great multitude of men, i.e. the majority of mankind. Gabriel Vasquez, S.J. He was a Spanish Jesuit theologian and scholastic philosopher. He says, there are more reprobate than predestinate. It is perfectly clear from scripture that the number of the reproved and of those who are damned is absolutely greater than that of the predestined and of those who are saved. See Matthew 7, narrow is the gate and straight is the way, etc. and many other passages. But with regard to the faithful, it is uncertain whether the majority are damned there are some who piously judge the more of the faithful are saved. Others, however, think the majority of the faithful are damned, an opinion favoured by Gregory 
Augustine, etc. Gulilmus Estius. He was an exegete, theologian, and hagiographer. He writes, It is neither false nor rash, but all too true, that the number of the reprobate is far greater than of the elect, in terms of the entire human race. Furthermore, even among the faithful, Scripture and the authority of the fathers bear witness that there are more bad than good, and hence more reprobate than elect. Then John of Jesus Mary OCD. He was a professor and mystical writer. He says, From the teaching of the gospel, it is certain how very few there are who are saved. For divine truth himself has said, Narrow is the way that leadeth to life, and few there are that find it. Now, this statement of our Lord Jesus Christ is of such authority and weight that I do not think any Christian could be found to contest it. Hence, we may infer that there are very few Christians whose dispositions and attitudes to God's majesty are such that we may prudently judge them to be of the number of the elect. Francisco Suarez, S.J. Suarez was a Spanish Jesuit priest, philosopher, and theologian one of the leading figures of the School of Salamanca movement. He says, The second comparison concerns men in absolute terms. Embracing everyone that has lived or shall live from the beginning of the world to its end. And in this case, the common and true opinion is that the number of the reprobate is greater. The third comparison, the first opinion. This comparison concerns believers or Christians. Are more of them saved than damned, or the contrary? Some piously believe that more of the faithful are saved, but the contrary view is more commonly held, viz. that more Christians are reprobates than predestinate. And in this general understanding of the term Christian, I incline to think that the number of the reprobate is greater. But if by Christian we understand only those who die within the Catholic Church, it seems to me more likely that more are saved under the law of grace. Martinus Becanus S.J. He was a Dutch-born Jesuit priest known as a theologian and controversialist. He says, It is probably that there are more reprobate than predestinate. From Matthew 7, 14, Narrow is the way that leadeth to life, and few there are that find it. And Matthew 20, 16, Many are called, but few are chosen. St. Gregory understands this of the faithful alone. So, on the basis of Gregory's opinion, it is said that even among Christians and the faithful, the number of the reprobate is greater than the number of the predestinate. Theodore Smizing OSF OBS He says, I answer that it is certain from divine revelation that although the number of the elect is great, as emerges from Apocalypse 7 and elsewhere, yet only a minority of men is elected to eternal life. This is clear from Matthew 7, narrow is the way that leadeth to life, and few there are that find it, and from Matthew 20, 16, for many are called, but few chosen. Hence, this conclusion is of faith. It is certain that there are very few predestinate in comparison with the multitude of the reprobate. The Holy Fathers furthermore infer as probable that even among the faithful, only a minority will be saved. Say as probable, as it is not certain, and teachers can be found who think that the greater number of Christians will be saved, such as Sylvester in his Rosa Aurea, or at two, on the Gospel of Septuagesima Sunday, in a question near the end. Franciscus de Cristo, Dist 41, Q. O. Conclusion 3. Cartagena, de predestination, and Suarez, Lib. 6, de predestination. But, I think the opinion of the Fathers more probable, whether we consider the signal corruption of the morals of Christians of the Scriptures. Diego Ruiz de Montoya, S.J. Montoya was a Spanish Jesuit theologian who taught philosophy and theology. He says, This opinion, the most Catholics will be saved, is more attractive than convincing. It wins the adherence of its patrons more by appeal to the will than by weight of argument or authority. But, as St. Augustine says, the inclinations of human opinion have never saved anyone. Their effect is, rather, by flattering and comforting men, to encourage many to sleep on and be damned. John of St. Thomas, O.P. 
John of St. Thomas was a prominent Dominican philosopher and theologian of the 17th century. He says, Concerning the quantity or number of the elect in comparison with the reprobate, some have wondered whether the number of predestinate is greater than the number of the reprobate. Now, this difficulty with regard to men, for in the case of the angels it seems more certain that the majority are saved, is easily solved in a general sense, to the effect that out of the whole human race there are fewer who are saved, for many are called, but few are chosen. And again, how narrow is the gate, and straight is the way that leadeth to life, and few there are that find it. And the angel to Esdras, for Esdras 8, it is certain, however, that the elect are described as few, not in absolute terms, but by comparison with the number of the reprobate. Guilio Cesar Recupito S.J. He says, 1. It is certain that the greater part of mankind are reproved. If you include everyone, even infidels, and throughout all the ages of the world, even today, if you consider the church of the faithful outside of which there is no salvation, it represents a very small part of mankind in comparison with the multitude of infidels, the Muslims, pagans, and heretics, whose damnation is certain. So, the whole controversy is reduced to the faithful. 2. It seems certain that the greater number of the faithful are of the elect, if the number of children dying in the first seven years or so of life, before the use of reason, is included. So, the controversy is further reduced to the case of adult Catholics. Are more of them reprobate than predestined? 3. The contrary opinion seems truer, namely that the number of the predestined among adult Catholics is exceeded by the number of the reprobate. Nicholas Turlow, he says, On the other hand, both reason and authority, solidly based on the scriptures and the holy fathers, appear to support the view that more Catholic adults are damned than are saved. The reason for this is that by far the greater number of Christians lives in the state of mortal sin, and according to St. Augustine's principle, as a man has lived, so does he die, so that it is rare for one who has lived a bad life to die well, and vice versa. Vincent Contenson, OP. He was a French Dominican theologian and preacher. He says, Although it is not possible to pin down the exact number of those who are to be saved, yet from the scriptures and the tradition of the fathers, it is certain that those who are saved will be few, and much fewer than those who are lost. Of Catholics, tell me, pray, how many are they who tread the narrow way of salvation, lead their life according to the maxims of the gospel, do not follow after the concupiscences, who keep their innocence, do serious penance after a fall, do not often relapse, do not love the world, who pursue holiness, without which no one shall see God. Rare indeed is such a man in this century of ours, for the lamentation of Salvian over his own times might more truly be applied to ours. Apart from a very few, what else is almost the whole body of Christians save a cesspit of vices? A situation that calls rather for tears than proofs. Matthias Faber, S.J. Faber was a German Jesuit priest who gained fame as a religious writer and preacher. He says, From them, it is clear that the majority, even of Christians, live in the state of mortal sin. According to St. Augustine's rule, he who lives well dies well, and he who lives badly generally dies badly. Jean-Baptiste Sanger, S.J. Jean-Baptiste Sanger was a Jesuit spiritual director and writer. He says, If you ask me how it is possible for God, who loves men so greatly, who so yearns to save them all, who suffered so much for their salvation to accept that almost all should be damned, I will answer that his love for them and his desire for their salvation is even greater than we may say or think. Since the number of the reprobate is so great and that of the elect is so low, since so many are damned and so few are saved, which of us ought not to fear to be numbered among this prodigious multitude? Philip of the Blessed Trinity OCD. He says, Conclusion I answer that with reference to the whole of mankind, the number of the reprobate is much greater than that of the predestined. 
If, however, we speak only of Christians, it remains more probable that the number of the reprobate is greater than the number of the predestined. Giovanni Cardinal, Order of Cistercians He was an Italian Cistercian, cardinal, liturgist, and devotional author. He says, The number of the elect is small, and much less than the number of the reprobate, even speaking only of those who hold the Orthodox faith, to the exclusion of children who die before the use of reason. This is shown by the infallible testimony of the Scriptures, and by many signs and reasons, as well as by experience. He draws the fewness of the saved for adult Catholics from the infallible testimony of Scripture, meaning he believes this is absolutely true. For a Franciscus Bonnes Bay, OCD, for a Franciscus was a Catholic scholastic theologian and philosopher. He says that the number of the reprobate is greater than the number of the predestined follows from the Gospel, Matthew 7, enter by the narrow gate, and 20, for many are called, but few are chosen. Bishop Ulame Henri OFM He was a Belgian Franciscan theologian who became the Bishop of Ypres. He says, in absolute terms, the number of the elect is great. But in comparison with the number of the reprobate, it is inconsiderable. This is why the election of those who are to be saved is compared to the casting of lots, since as when lots are cast, the lot falls seldom and on few. Indeed, whether we heed the scriptures as expounded by the fathers, or the great corruption of the behavior of Christians or Catholics, it's all too likely that even of these, the number of the elect is less. Jean-Baptiste Gonnet O.P. He was a French Dominican theologian. He says, This once established, there remains the difficulty and debate among theologians as to whether of those Christians who are truly such and live and die in the faith of Christ and in obedience to the Holy Roman Church, more are predestined than reprobate. An affirmative answer is given by Sylvester, Suarez, Grenada, and Ruiz, who think the majority of Catholics are saved, and among them Ruiz pays the devout sex the compliment of asserting that more women are predestined than men. But the negative opinion is more common among theologians, as Suarez admits, and is taught by Cajetan on Matthew 25, Vasquez and Molina on St. Thomas, Summa Theologiae, IQ Sid A7, Alvarez, De Auxilis, Disp 43, Philippus A. S. Trinitate in S. T. H. I. C. Disp 17 Dub 4, as well as scriptural interpreters, including Nicholas of Lyra, Maldonatus, Cornelius a Lapide, Carthusianus, Dennis the Carthusian, and others. I will now briefly show that the opinion holding that many more of the faithful are reprobate than elect agrees better with scripture, the Holy Fathers, and ecclesiastical history. Joannes Bosco, OFM, he says, Hence, the part of our conclusion which states that only a minority of men are found in the Book of Life is defied. And Smizing adds that it is confirmed by experience. If the question is restricted to adult believers, it is quite credible that there are more reprobate than predestined. And the way of life of the bulk of the faithful lends weight to this, as well as Matthew 7.14. Narrow is the way that leadeth to life, and few there are that find it. Gervasius Brisacensis, OFM Cap. He says, 1. Speaking of all men, both the faithful and the infidels, it is certain that there are more reprobate than elect. This is expressly declared in Holy Scripture. 2. The only difficulty concerns Catholics, concerning whom there are two opinions. The first of these is that more of them are chosen, in favor of which it is argued that a great many infants die after baptism, but before attaining the use of reason. If I am asked my own view, I reply that in view of the goodness of God, I find the former opinion preferable, or rather, I find the whole subject quite uncertain. The Discount Carmelites of Salamanca, they say, it may be inquired whether the number of the reprobate is greater than the number of the elect, and secondly, whether of the faithful the majority are of the elect or of the reprobate. To the first question, it is certain that the number is greater from Matthew 20 and 7, and from Isaiah 24, in which the elect in comparison with the great number of the reprobate are likened to a few olives or to the bunches that remain after the grape harvest. 
Concerning the second question, however, since it cannot be settled by certain reason or authority, St. Thomas says that the matter is known to God alone, so we will not make it the subject of a specific inquiry. Francesco Lorenzo Brancati di Lauria, he was an Italian cardinal and theologian. He says, 1. If we made the comparison only among the faithful or Christians, the predestinate are fewer than the reprobate. This is proved from the crystal clear testimony of Christ in Matthew 22.16 and 20.14. Fra Paolo Senieri S.J. Fra Paolo was an Italian Jesuit preacher, missionary, and aesthetical writer. He says, What the holy doctors teach us with one accord must be accepted as the truth. But these holy doctors are in agreement in holding that many more Christians lose paradise than gain it. Thomas Munyasa S.J. He says, it seems that, one, taking all men and angels together, the number of the predestinate is greater. Two, taking all men together, the number of the reprobate is greater. Three, in the context of all the faithful, including adults and children, the number of the predestinate is greater. This is because among the faithful and likewise even among heretics and schismatics having valid baptism, there are almost as many baptized children who die all of whom are saved as adults, many of whom are certainly saved too. 4. With regard to the adult faithful, whether the number of the predestinate or of the reprobate is greater, a. The pious view in favor of a majority of predestinate is followed by Suarez, b. But on the other hand, in favor of a greater number of reprobate, we find that the common opinion of the doctors, both scholastic and expositive, very strongly supported by Holy Scripture and the Holy Fathers and by weighty arguments, furnished in abundance by the very learned Montoya in his Disputatio 54, in which the fullest and most accurate information can be found on the subject, for the use of both theology students and popular preachers. Hence, I dare not pronounce an opinion. Henri-Marie Boudon He was a 17th century French abbot and spiritual author. He says, It is not only the fathers of the church, nor only the prophets and the greatest saints who have taught us that there are few people who are saved. It is a God who has come from the other world, who knows all things, and from whom nothing can be hidden who has revealed it to us. No further doubt is possible. It is an infallible matter, and of the utmost certainty that there are few who are saved. Everyone must agree with this, and yet there are few who are thoroughly convinced of it. Louis Baudalieu, S.J. He was a French Jesuit and preacher. He says, Ah, what is more striking in the gospel than the small number of the elect? The Jesuit fathers of Würzburg, they say, that the number of the elect in comparison with the reprobate, will be small, is quite explicitly taught by Christ, agreed by the fathers and confirmed by reason. And among Christians, there are many who are heretics or schismatics, and among the faithful, many who are depraved. Yet there are some who think that the majority of Christians are saved if those who die in childhood are counted as well as adults. But not even this much is at all sure. Bishop Jacques Benet Leniel Bousseau. He was a French bishop and theologian, renowned for his sermons and other addresses. He says, As the elect, who are few, are among the called, who are many, the straight way of the commandments and rigid virtue is also everywhere to be found. And although little frequented by the malice of men, it remains visible before them throughout the world. The small number of those who go in, although great in itself, and small only in comparison with those who perish. Dionysius Valensis OFM Cap He says, Very many are damned for receiving the sacraments badly. St. John Chrysostom, of course, writes as follows, I speak not with rashness, but as I believe and feel. I do not think that there are many among priests who are saved, but many more that perish. Hence, the commoner opinion of the doctors is that, not only of the whole human race, but even of Catholic adults alone, more damned than saved. Franciscus Heno OFM He says, In comparison with those who perish, there are few who are saved, but are more saved than lost of the true faithful. 
The more common opinion, and the one which better agrees with the fathers, is that more damned. Canon Nicholas Powells. He says, In the light of such clear passages from Holy Scripture, it is not lawful to doubt that there are many more reprobate than elect. Pierre Collet. Pierre Collet was a French theologian in the 17th century. He says, To the question, Is the number of the predestinate greater than the number of the reprobate? The answer is that it is not, but rather the contrary. Countless of the faithful, and even, I say it weeping, the ministers of the altar, deny their faith by the sinfulness of their lives. For a Zachary Lasselve, he says, It is defied that the number of the elect and of the saved is small, as Christ said that few are chosen. Two, of all Christians there are few elect. Three, of all adult Catholics few are elect. If we speak of Catholic adults alone, I see that more of them are damned than are saved. In other words, there are few elect among Catholic adults in comparison with the reprobate. Carolus Gislenus Dauman, he says, Let it be deeply impressed on our minds that many more perish than are saved, and this is why our Saviour said that many are called but few are chosen. You may ask whether among Catholics more are saved than are damned, or the other way around. Who knows? The matter is quite uncertain. Steyard's opinion or conjecture that more Catholics are saved than damned is opposed, on the basis of many authorities, both scriptural and patristic, by Dr. Verschuren, and there is no denying that even now many join him in maintaining that the majority of Catholics are damned rather than saved albeit the arguments by which they strive to demonstrate this are not so powerful as they suppose. For a Claude Ut S.J. He was a French Jesuit from Rouen, known for his spiritual writings. He says, There are few elect even in the religious life, if the religious life is scarcely differentiated from the world, and every effort is not made to enter by the narrow gate. Vincenzo Ludovico Cardinal Gotti Vincenzo was a cardinal and theologian of the Roman Catholic Church. He says, After agreeing with St. Thomas Aquinas that the number of the reprobate is greater than the number of the predestinate, he says, Of Christians, a significant fraction are schismatics or heretics. And of Catholics, if you examine them closely, how many are found to live badly, and how few who faithfully keep the law of God, without the observance of which, Eternal life is not granted. Antonio Mayer S.J. He says, It is certain that in the context of the entire human race, more are destined to be reprobate than blessed. This is inferred from Christ's words in Matthew 7.13 and again 20.16. Of adult believers, Fres Senieri maintains that more are damned than saved in his Cristiano Instruito, P1, wherein he proves his opinion from the fathers, theologians, and reason. But irrespective of this, it is certain that of all the men together, the majority are damned. Daniel Concina O.P. He was Dominican preacher, theologian, controversialist, leader of anti-probabilists. He says, It is agreed by all that the number of the reprobate is far greater if we include all men. Catholics, heretics, faithful and unbelievers together. Our question, therefore, concerns only Catholic adults, sons of the Church, to the exclusion of small children. Holy Writ, the Holy Fathers of the Church, and the more recent theologians commonly teach that the majority of adult Catholics are damned and the minority saved. This is the common teaching of the theologians of the last century. Charles René Billois, O.P. Bilois was a Dominican preacher, controversialist, and theologian. He says, In comparison with the reprobate, those who are saved are fewer than those who are damned, as Augustine says in Book 2 of his uncompleted work against Julian, chapter 142, relying on Matthew 7, many are called, but few are chosen. And it is clear that there are fewer Christians than infidels, while even among Christians how many are heretics, cut off from the communication of the church outside of which there is no salvation. As to whether of Catholic Christians the number of the predestinate is less than of the reprobate, theologians differ, and on either side base their case on debatable foundations, 
for which reason I leave the question unresolved. Giovanni Lorenzo Berti, OSA Giovanni was an Italian Augustinian theologian. He says, The number of the elect is great, but very small in comparison with the number of the damned. This is shown first by Holy Scripture, then quotes Matthew 7 and 22, Luke 8 and Isaiah. Secondly, it is proved from the fathers, St. Augustine on Psalm 48, St. Gregory, Homily 14, St. Chrysostom, Discourse 14. Add this to the very clear evidence of reason. Guillaume François Berthier, S.J. Guillaume was a Jesuit professor and writer. He says, The prophet Isaiah, in chapter 66, says that the number of the damned will be very great, which is not difficult to conceive, as the number of the enemies of God surpasses almost infinitely the number of his servants. Pierre Francesco Foggini, he says, It is quite uncontested by anyone that many more men are to be damned than saved, if we consider the entire human race. And the mind of the ancient fathers on this subject is that adult Catholics will for the greater part be eternally damned, and no single father can be found to have written otherwise. Vietor A. Cocalio, OFM Cap, he said, I am forced to say that the number of the elect destined to be set in the heavenly fatherland is probably exceeded by the number of the reprobate, even of those who live within the Catholic Church. Claude Davisnay Abbot Claude was a French writer, canon and vicar general of Troyes. He said, I want all men to be saved, my beloved, and for this I died for all. Yet few are saved. Many indeed are called, but few are chosen. True it is that there are few who are saved. True it is that there are many Christians, and true that many of them shall perish. Cardinal Pierre Giraud he said, When I say that the number of the elect will be small in comparison with the multitude of the reprobate, I have no need, in order to back up my claim, to expand the terms of the comparison to the whole of mankind. But I am speaking here of the children of the true church. I say that within the bosom of the Catholic Church, the number of the elect will be the lesser figure, and I prove it from Scripture the mind of the saints, and by reason itself, when enlightened by the light of faith. Thank you for watching this video, and thank you Big Steve for helping me record this video and hiring Fiverr voice actors. Now, it is clear that the teaching of the Church Fathers, saints, and scholastic theologians exegeting scripture is that most people go to hell. However, no one knows whether or not they go to hell, and no one goes to hell by accident, and God truly desires your salvation. Remember, St. Alphonsus Liguori says, he who prays is certainly saved. He who prays not is certainly damned. All the blessed, except infants, have been saved by prayer. All the damned have been lost through not praying. If they had prayed, they would not have been lost. And this is, and will be, the greatest torment in hell. To think how easily they might have been saved, only by asking God for his grace. But that now is too late. The time of prayer is over. Thus, if you want to be saved, pray the rosary. St. Louis Marie de Montfort says, for never will anyone who says his rosary every day become a formal heretic or be led astray by the devil. This is a statement that I should gladly sign with my blood. For a tutorial on how to pray the rosary, check out the links in the description. Please subscribe and share this video with any Catholics who reject this hard teaching. Please pray for me and my family. And feel free to donate to my ministry. Also, my upcoming book should be coming out within the next month. God bless.